I'm Tom. Uh, I'm doing design for more than uh, more than uh, 20, 12 years, and uh, I kind of like worked with multiple venture building companies. So uh, I've been like deeply involved uh, in building startups. Uh, this is kind of like my main expertise uh, for the past five to, to six years. And uh, like very originally, uh, I came from uh, graphic design, uh, but I kind of like quickly switched to, to UX and kind of my, my package is uh, to like combine those, those two elements to, uh, together. So, because I, I think that uh, it's really essential uh, that not only like the visual or UX separately, but those two things need to, uh, need to work uh, together. So uh, right now, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm writing a book uh, about UX, uh, which I can share with you later. And also uh, the things I'm gonna like talk about it today are very much connected to, to what I'm like trying to, uh, put to, to put out there. So, so yeah, I think uh, we can start. All right, so I'm gonna talk about the typical client is always the right problem. Uh, for me, it's all about the mindset and also about the process. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do it and when I'm not having this kind of issue with, uh, with my clients or at least most of it. Uh, let's click there, yeah. So yeah, uh, as I introduce myself, I'm mostly focused on brand products uh, and user experience. And let's just uh, show you how I do it. The client is always right. Uh, I'm not sure where does this come from, but I first heard it when I was young. Uh, it just tells you to like back up and do what you ask, ask for. I also started my design career 12 years ago with uh, this in mind. But then I reached a place where I wasn't sure I want to do design anymore. There was no joy out of it. And I was seriously thinking about switching to a totally different field. I deep dive to this feeling and I've realized that I'm devastated how hard it is to express myself, to express my opinion. Like the most, I was escaping this, doing my own personal projects with no client, just for myself. It's so easy to create uh, what you want, uh, share it on Dribble or Behance and receive kudos and thumbs up uh, from other fellow designers but it's like being a model on Instagram. You feel like doing the real thing, but you're not really. This is not reality uh, and you're really in a bubble. If you are unable to sell your ideas to a client, you're not doing a service. You won't survive in the outside world. Your career won't survive. So I needed to take a step back to define why am I doing this? And everything starts with the question why. The why is for me very much connected uh, to myself. So everything starts with you, with me, with I. Uh, the definition of why is essential. So I wrote down what, I'm, what I feel I'm doing with my design in a simple scheme. So I wrote down that I change things, I help others, I always learn and I solve problems. And the cornerstone uh, of, of what I do uh, was just there. I solve problems. This is kind of like my essential thing. If you really car come far enough uh, in your career, you know, like designing, you'd soon find out that you must focus on benefits and not just the features. And those things I just showed you, like helping others or solving problems are benefits, not features. And this is essential because for example, features are, I do design or I do UX, but the benefits you bring to the table are key. Like I solve challenges or my design helps you to become successful. If you adopt this concept in a product way, it could be like this. I design a transportation app. It's a feature, 
just a description of what it is. But no, you're changing the way people get home. Or another example, my favorite one uh, I did some years ago, I designed an app for smart mailboxes. Those are big mailboxes operated uh, by your smartphone. You could have anywhere to deliver your shipments. So I designed an app for smart mailboxes. But no, I'm allowing people to never go to the post office ever again. When you switch the mindset, you can approach your clients as well differently from two perspectives. First, I'm here to solve your problem. I'm not here to just like do what you need or what you ask for, but I'm really here to help and to solve your problem. And the second is always asking why we are doing this. What is the benefit? Most clients don't realize it. And this is the first time you could change the perception of a project and yourself for a client. So always look for the why of others. It will put you on the same page. You're really delivering value with only one but. And the but is put your ego away. Just don't judge the, the why of others. Try to understand it. And if it's really not possible, shake hands and walk away. It's for the benefit of both sides. Trust me on that. So we have why and what. The last piece of the puzzle is how. That's where a proper process comes. Always productize what you do. Use the same fine-tuned process every time you build something. Try it on multiple clients, really set the, project, the process strict, and then follow it every time you build something. It will, give, it will put you or give you confidence and also kind of like ease uh, the workload you, you need to do. For every step of a process, have a list of questions and data you need answers to. Most clients will realize they're missing the answers and then you're here to help them. For example, my first steps are why, purpose, goals, and what success look like. We align together with a client and every time a decision is made, it needs to be aligned with the answers we put together. Uh, so it's froze, I'm sorry. Yeah. I also have a checklist uh, to cover that, to, to follow. So for example, this is the checklist of the initial process. Uh, I'm always checking the current, current status. I know the purpose of the project. I know the goals and I know how success look like. All of those elements have sub questions. So I know what the problem is. I know what works and what doesn't. Uh, regarding the purpose, I know what the priorities are. I know why we need to build this. And the last one, which is quite often overlooked, is to define with the client how the success look like. So I know how to measure goals. It could be number of leads, it could be number of sales, whatever. But it's really good to align with the client. Because when you align on how the success look like, you can later uh, kind of like... Uh, back up your decisions because you are trying to reach the success. And a lot of clients really listen to that. So you really have to keep asking questions and where there is no answer, uh, just decide what to test. When you are offered a solution from a client, you have two options. First, even if you disagree, put every feature the client wants to the complex version or do the complex version and track or test if users are really using all the features, then you'll have proof because if some of the features are not used, you know that you need to get rid of them or just place them somewhere else. Or you have a second option, do just the MVP, the bare minimum and track if someone is asking for a missing feature or just generally missing something. My pro tip is they usually don't. 
All is about communication. Communication with the client is key. Aligning with the client is key. But remember one thing. People will forget what you said, but will never forget how you made them feel. So always ask why. Or as a UX designer, question every opinion with based on what data. So all of this is the reason I started to write a book uh, about this process. Uh, it's called uh, The Ultimate UX Survival Guide.